welcome back to me being cheap i'm going to tell you today about a quick and easy way to protect your chickens or to pr protect your eggs from the chickens eating or pecking at them i got quite the block here and one of these ladies has developed a nasty habit is it you or you anyway I'm going to walk around here and show you uh, what Michael made. Pretty quick and easy. All right, give me a minute. All right, so these are the boxes. And we used to keep just, yes, girl, I hear you. We used to keep just the wood chips in here. And the birds would kick them out. And so we were constantly having to put them in there. The thing is, is that they will actually lay just on the plain wood. So let me show you what we made. And see, there's already two eggs in there. So let me take these. Actually, let me show you on one that's not used. Okay. So this is just a piece of whatever type of wood you happen to have. I know wood's really expensive right now. And this is a paint tray just a cheap old metal paint tray from Walmart. And this is some indoor outdoor carpeting. And Michael got this at Lowe's, he got a roll of it. Uh, we couldn't find a small roll, so we got plenty extra for a, another project. Anyhow, used some uh, Elmer spray adhesive, glued this directly to the pan. Um, you know, if you needed to change it, you could just rip it out and put in some new or just shake this out. These birds are actually pretty good about not pooping in their box. And then behind here is some foam. Um, it actually came in one of our Amazon packages. We just recycled it and put some foam here for a cushion and then glued the um, indoor outdoor carpet. So anyway, of course, it's a paint tray. It sets at an angle. And so the chicken lays the egg and it rolls under here and this board just sits on top and then they can't they can't get to their egg and eat it or peck it and so as you can see there's two in there right now let's check these others none there none there we already got a few out Ooh, here's another one we already got a few out today so anyway if you've got some chickens that have developed that nasty habit, this is a way that you can protect your eggs. Also, it helps keep the eggs clean. Uh, it's just now starting to dry out. We have had, we've had so much rain. These eggs have been a muddy mess until we did this. I mean, they're still a little dirty, but not bad. All right, um, if you wanna stick with me, um, hang tight. I'm gonna show you some other things that we're working on. It's a nice day. I just got done detailing the Suburban and Michael's changing the oil on it. I'll walk up right over here and show you the greenhouse. I'm going to do a longer video on this greenhouse a little later, but as you can see, uh, some of the roof has been repaired. I won't go into details with that right now. Uh, Michael did get the gravel in. Um, he used some of the paving stones that I had used originally. Um, I had gotten these for free. I just had to haul them and I painted them black to try and help retain the temperature. We took those out, put down black plastic to try and stop the weeds, and then um, had some gravel delivered. These are uh, concrete mixing trays, buckets, totes from Lowe's. And uh, Michael was able to get these filled today. So he used garden soil, potting soil. He put some perlite in there and some peat moss. So um, we are getting ready to move. We got some brassicas growing downstairs. I'll, I'll show you those in just a minute. Getting ready to plant those. I think it's getting to where we're not gonna have another freeze. It is into March, 2021. I don't know, it's been crazy weather so far this year. So we'll see. Um, this is the old pond. We're going to cut that plastic out, and we've got a grate that's going to go on top of that. So that's that. We'll come around here. I planted some garlic in this old strawberry bed. We had a really, really hard, 
freeze and a long period like a lot of people in the U.S. did. I killed the strawberries. And I'm trying grow bags this year. Michael bought some of these off the internet. And I put some garlic in this one to see how it does. And then we haven't done anything with the big gardens yet. We did go out to the other garden that we tried last year and got all of it cleaned up. These are actually onions uh, that overwintered. They didn't get killed by that cold snap or anything. So these guys didn't show up last year, um, but they're, they're really growing this year. Maybe I'll get some onions. We have volunteer horseradish, and we had some volunteer lettuce. I don't know where it went. Oh, there it is. Got volunteer lettuce coming up. Alrighty. Then back over here. I've got more garlic. So, let me get out of the light so you can see. Hoping we get some. We're playing some last year, didn't have any luck. All right, give me a minute and I'll show you something else. Baby bunnies are getting out of the nest. So we're going to probably put them in the grow out pen. I think they're, hey guys, they're kind of scared, but they're getting, uh, they're not in their nest, they're hopping around. So probably put them in the grow out pen. I think they've probably been with mama long enough. Uh, seven. We got seven from this litter. The other two, um, one of them had a miscarriage. Actually, we think she got pregnant with one and delivered just one, and that was it. And we found it after, um, found it after the cold freeze, and I don't, I don't even think it was alive when it was born. I think it was a miscarriage. But anyway, there's only one of them, and the other one, uh, evidently did not get pregnant this go round. So maybe we'll have better luck next time. All right, give me a minute and I'll show you our plants. All right, so we have no automotive store in town. We're lucky now we have a grocery store. And we got the oil drained out, or I should say Michael got the oil drained out. And we had four filters, none of which was the one for the Suburban. And it's really interesting because we stocked up not too long ago and we bought a couple filters for each vehicle and we don't think that we've changed the oil in this very many times certainly not over this past year you know with the lockdown we didn't really drive a whole lot so the big mystery is where are the oil filters so michael did hop in the car or in the uh in the truck has to run to walmart to get a filter I told him grab two of them <laughs> so we'd have another for next time all right now I'm going to show you our seedlings all right finally showing you the seedlings down in the creepy cellar so we have peppers and tomatoes and we've got it written down somewhere what all varieties these are I think we've also got some eggplant in here looks like some melons some of them didn't fare too well in the back. Uh, sweet potatoes are growing slips. This one is putting off some slips. Uh, this one is not. That probably just needs to be pitched. This one is finally starting to put off some. And we were hoping that this leftover purple sweet potato here in the back would do it. Um, but it's not. It had actually started sprouting um, in the drawer. That's what that is. Um, but we could not get slips to grow. So, probably got two that need pitched. I uh, went to Walmart today. Um, yeah, I didn't get a filter while we were there. And they actually had some herbs in the grocery section. And so, we wanted to get a jump start on this. So, we actually bought some plants instead of uh, planting from seed. Now, I understand that mint, it's hard to grow from seed, but once you have it growing, I mean, I've had mint in the past. It just pretty much takes over. So, we just got one little peppermint plant, a sage plant, and then two types of oregano, Italian and Greek. These are our brassicas, uh, all sorts of cauliflower. Uh, that's cabbage in the back and some broccoli. 
And these are some herbs that we started. So we've got some dill, um, cilantro. Cilantro just, I don't know, it's never been one to grow much here in Kansas. We do have some basil, uh, several varieties of basil there in the back. Now, as far as regrowing vegetables from scraps, these are the green onions. Um, of course, those are really easy to regrow. Um, but this lettuce has really taken off. I've got two things of lettuce and a celery back there in the back. So those are growing. Um, this is a dill that we bought from the store. And as you can see, this one's a little bit bigger than the one we're starting, or the ones we're starting from seeds, but still, uh, we'll have a couple varieties. And what's interesting is this basil is really taking off, and we've got five of them. So uh, Michael was cooking dinner. We were having dinner guests over, and we needed some fresh basil. And ours was obviously not big enough yet, and what we had from last year had already died. So we bought uh, basil from the uh, from the grocery store, and it had roots on it. And so we used it, and we used almost the entire five plants, put the roots in there, and it has really taken off. So this was grown from uh, grocery store cuttings. And if we come over here, this is a mint plant. I believe this is spearmint, uh, sweet mint. And this is rosemary. Yep. And I have never been able to grow rosemary, and usually when I get a plant, a rosemary plant, it usually dies. So I don't know what it is with me and rosemary, but we're trying again. Strawberries. All right, so this one back here was a bare root, um, as were all of these. And that's just a weed. Only a couple of them made it, um, and then they died. And I've never had luck with the bare root. So Michael went ahead and purchased some plants, which is really good because ours outside died when the, with that really, really, really hard freeze. They usually just come back year after year. So, um, okay, what did not work? These were some onions that had sprouted in, in the onion storage drawer. And so I cut the tops off of them and tried to grow them. And as you can see, it did not work. So I had to throw that out. Uh, let's see, this is our water barrel. And you guys may have seen that before. Um, get the water from down below. And what we do, there's a hose there. See, there's no plumbing in this cellar, but we'll run the dehumidifier. And uh, when it gets moist down here, run the dehumidifier and uh, it drains into the bucket, and then we can get water for the watering can down here. These are potatoes that were sprouting up in the kitchen, several varieties. Uh, probably need to get these in those grow bags that you saw out in the greenhouse, get that going pretty quick. But uh, yeah, I've got a jump start on them, quite a few. And these are actually, um, these smaller ones here, these are the ones that I grew last year. Um, and I tried, that was my experiment, I tried to store them in the paper shavings, keep them out of the, out of the light, and it didn't work. Um, and then there's a few uh, red potatoes. Uh, hopefully get those planted as well. But yeah, this is what we've got going down in the creepy cellar. And once the weather is good for the season, we'll get a lot of this stuff put out. Probably go ahead and put these brassicas out in the greenhouse. And uh, again, these are little grow bags. We're going to try those this year as an experiment. All right. Thanks for watching. And we'll check back in with you in a, in a bit.